Greg, I looked this woman in her optic scams, and I says, I said, I says. Welcome back, guys. My name is Deonis Burton. I'm a fashion and portrait photographer based out of Miami, Florida. Today, we're going to be focused on eyes. I've seen quite a few edits online where the eyes just look crazy to me. I've always been a proponent of making sure the eyes pop because I understand that in portraits, the eyes are what like draw you into the subject. All right, so knowing that we have so many tutorials on how to edit eyes and so many ways to do it, there's like almost everything in Photoshop. Um, today, we're gonna focus on one specific line of thinking when it comes to retouching eyes. So we're gonna take this image. We are going to clone step and mind you, I've also masked out what I've done for the eyes already. So that I'm not, you know, I wanna show you guys how I would do it from scratch. And then just walk through, I'm just gonna talk you through. So I'm just gonna talk you guys through what I would normally do when I'm addressing the eyes. So let's make a clone step visible. There we go. So um, the first thing I would do is come in here, grab my patch tool, and we're gonna reduce the veins. First, the first thing I always kind of address is just the veins, reducing those veins. I'm using the, the, as you guys can see, I'm using a patch tool. Everything is kind of basically set to default. My diffusion is at five. And I will come in here and we're just gonna reduce the veins. I'm also using a Wacom tablet so that you guys can know all the gear and everything I'm using. I always use the small version of the Wacom tablet. I made the mistake early on in my career and bought the biggest Wacom tablet I could find. And uh, you don't need it. You just really just don't need it. Now, also, as you guys can see, this is not like a crazy scenario where there is so many veins to clean up or there is some like abnormality or issue just within her eyes. There's, yeah, you know, everything's pretty straightforward. The only thing I'm dealing with now is as I'm trying to use the patch tool is that I stopped trying to remove veins and tried to remove her contact. So now that we clean up the veins, we're going to grab our clone stamp tool we have it set to normal let's set it to lighten let's reduce this down to like three percent we're on current layer current layer that's a real word current layer and then we're going to clone stamp out her contacts and then also follow it up with the patch tool so i like to use a combination of things to get rid of things <laughs> a combination of tools to get rid of things i don't just use one thing to to do this i think that looks pretty good now obviously we can still see there's some red in here just a little bit but we're going to get rid of that later but the first thing we're going to do is just get rid of those veins get rid of our contact and this was meant to be a beauty image as well. So a lot of times when you're cleaning up a beauty, you're gonna work a little bit more intense than you would for a portrait. I wouldn't go this far if I was doing headshots or I'm doing family portraits for someone, I wouldn't go this in depth with cleaning up the eyes. This is definitely a more advanced or more time consuming option. I'm gonna zoom back out, things look okay. I can kind of see that this eye looks a little bit darker than this one. I'm wondering why that is, but let's just go ahead and fix it. So next thing we would do is get a curve adjustment layer. Come in here. So I like to use this option because what this, this option does, it, it allows you to choose a specific luminosity value. So when I click here, it's gonna show me on the right hand side exactly that area. 
So when I'm, what I'm brightening is that area. Now it looks absolutely nuts right now and that's okay to boost it that high because, because we are gonna invert our mask and then we're gonna paint in the amount that we want. So we're gonna press B, gonna get ourselves, gonna press X. See over here, I press, press X. It swaps in between those two colors. So whatever those colors are. So we're gonna swap to white. We're gonna put our flow at like, uh, let's say 4%. Keep our pass at 100. And then we are going to slowly paint this in. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Not too much. Remember, we don't want to make the eyes too bright. I just kind of want these two to match up a little bit more. It looks a little muddy in here. So let's try to brighten this whole situation up. Let's go on this side a little bit as well. Now, mind you, you, you see I'm not going up here because like we discussed before, as light comes down, hits the lashes, it's gonna create a shadow right in this area. Same on this side. It's gonna create that shadow. So anything, anything that we're adding as far as brightness has more to do with going opposite this light. Your your eyes are actually set up like a it's like a trans a translucent spear. Yeah, that's the right word. <laughs> so basically, as light comes this direction, let's make a blank layer really quick so I can draw some more. I know you guys love my art. Um, yeah, let's put that a little higher. So yeah, as light is coming this way, you know what? I like it the other way. Like kind of like building up. So as light is coming this way, it's gonna hit here, and then it's gonna actually end up coming on this side. It's making sense, you guys. So we're gonna come here. Light is coming this way, hits right here, goes through the eye, and then ends up over here. Same thing here. It comes this way. It's here through the eye and then yeah so you're gonna do all your brightening in this area here where this little dot is all right so let's delete that layer let's go back um remind you they don't things don't look bad at all right now i mean her eye color does help with making it pop a little more she has a lot of character and you can really see the detail already um, I am shooting with the Canon R5, so I'm, I'm getting these really, really huge files. But we can already see quite a bit of detail in our eyes. Um, so my next step would be to just dodge and burn. So if you want to manually set up your dodge and burn layers, you can come here, you can raise this up. We're gonna inverse that map. I said that map, that mask. Um, this will be our dodge. And then you can duplicate that, come to it. Let's bring that down. This will be your burn. Or if you have an action or you use the retouching panel, you can just click on DB curves and it does the same thing. Let's group these. I'm gonna lame these uh, dodge and burn. Dodge and burn. And then, so here's the, the thing when it comes to dodging and burning. You have to, one, you have to know what you're supposed to be dodging and burning. A lot of times people come in and they just start doing things. There is no like rhyme or reason to what they're doing. They're just kind of just making up stuff as they go. So, um, or they're just copying what they see other people do. So what we're gonna do is actually specifically add light in areas that are already bright or that should be bright. We're just gonna make them a little brighter. And we're also gonna do the same thing with burning we're going to burn or darken things that are already dark so we're not trying to reinvent the world we're just trying to enhance what we all already have so i have my flow at 10 percent. this could be less i have my brush pretty small um you don't have to go this far in i just trust myself enough to go this far in and then i'm just going to go around the eye and i'm going to follow what's already bright i'm going to come in here now again this is a longer method for doing this there are shorter methods um, that I, I will show you guys in another video, but today we're gonna go through the longer one. I wanna kinda get the idea of like, you guys knowing the principles first. Cause once you know the principles, then it, it, it's okay to break the rules. Um, just like anything else, like once you know the rules, you know how to break the rules in a constructive way, you know, in a way that makes sense. 
Um, so we're just gonna go around here and we're gonna follow all of the detail. Just follow the things that are already there. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Now, right here, you guys see the catch light from the reflector. That I like to really brighten up. I like to really um, follow up with that because um, that's one of the things that's gonna help the eye sparkle and help the the rest of the world connect with the, the portrait, connect with the subject in the portrait. All right, and you guys see, we are just following what's there. Again, another catch light. Let's go ahead and be a little aggressive with that. And we're coming in here with the eyes. We are not reinventing the wheel. We're not trying to be the smartest person on earth. We are just following what we are given and making the most of that. I'm gonna go in between the lashes. Now, mind you, see, I'm not really, I'm not getting on everything. We want a specific spots because when you pull out, and you compare the two. One of those looks amazing already. Makes our eyes look a little mystical. Um, just from <clears throat> her eyes look a little mystical just from dodging. We've done nothing else. All we did was dodge. And you can see on this side, if you compare just this side, sparkle, not as much sparkle. Sparkle, not as much sparkle, not as much sparkle. Um, all right, so let's move on and let's go ahead and, and burn. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna burn or darken the pupil itself. Again, we wanna create more depth. So that's, that's part of what we're doing. When you're doing any dodging or burning, you're trying to create more shape and create more depth. So that's what we are doing here. And if you hear any noise in the background, that's because my wife and I both work from home and I believe she's getting lunch or something. All right, so we are, again, following what we already have. I'm not going over the areas that are that have been dodged because those areas didn't need to be burned they need to be dodged and you can see we are creating a lot of depth here and we are just following what we are given we are not trying to reinvent the wheel we are following what we are given Now, the more time you spend on this, the more detail you can bring out. Mind you, we have not done any sharpening yet. Um, the only thing we are doing is dodging and burning. Now, look at that. No sharpening, just dodging and burning. We brought out so much detail in her eyes. Um, the other thing we like to do too, because your eye is a spear, um, and I, I learned this from drawing, um, when you want to make something look more spherical or you want to create shape with it, you um, you darken the edges of it and you brighten the middle. And then, you know, we kind of do that with everything else. But when you're trying to define the shape, that's how you do it. So we're trying to show that it's a circle. So we're going to darken in a circle, same burn layer. And we're going to let's light, let's lessen this down to 2%. And let's gradually go along this edge. Now I have seen people do overdo this a lot. I used to be one of those people. <laughs> I would definitely come in, overdo it um, when it came to that circle. Look at her eyes, man. It was such a drastic difference. Now mind you, this is a bit much. We're gonna reduce it down later. But for now, let's at least get everything in the right place. Um, so now that we've done with the actual pupil itself, uh, we're gonna go through, let's create another curves layer. On beauty shots like this, I like to really follow everything that's already there and really help define the eye a little bit more. So we're gonna create a curves adjustment layer. And most people who are like really, really organized will name these layers. I'm not <laughs> in that sense, um, but we're, let's name it anyway. So let's just call it Dodge to Highlights or whatever you wanna call it. But the whole point of this one, and as you can see, 
The difference between the other one and this one is that we're gonna really push it brighter compared to this one. You see the difference in the, in the curve? So the reason I do that is because I'm actually really aiming at like very specific highlights. Let's set this to 10. And so when I'm doing this as well, I'm, I like to go in the middle of whatever I'm brightening. You guys can see like I'm not doing the whole thing, but just the middle of it. Again, just the middle of it. And then I like to also, we're gonna press R, we're gonna rotate. Anytime I have to do sweeping motion. There we go. Let's reduce this down. I didn't finish my thought. Anytime I have to do any type of like long brush strokes, I like to rotate the canvas so that I can just make the same motion with my arm versus having my arm having to move around to try to fit whatever I'm doing. So we rotate the canvas and then we're gonna draw around here. Cause there's a lid here. I want that lid to pop out a little more. Now mind you, you don't have to do this on every image. I don't want people <laughs> watching this and thinking like, oh, he said I have to do it. I know he, he knows what he's talking about, but you have to do it for every single image. But that little bit makes a huge difference. All right, so let's group it together. Mind you, we have only used curves. We've only used curves. We haven't done anything else. We haven't added any sharpening. We haven't done anything else. But let's look at that eye. Before, after, before. Come on, computer, after. Big jump, let's, let's pull it back a little bit. Let's see, before. After. It looks good. So, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna leave this one how it is. Let's just focus on this eye for now. Um, the next thing we can do now, if we wanted to make this eye pop even more, um, let's go back into this layer and let's, we can actually lay, name the layers. I mean the group. Let's go back in this group and name the group. So the next thing that we can do is we can create a blank layer by pressing right here. By pressing the plus sign gives us a new layer. Um, So if we want to add more vibrance here, more color here, there's a few ways we can do it. Um, I just created a new layer here. Um, we can go in and find out what color is already in here. Again, we're not reinventing the wheel. We just want to see what's already there. So we have this green color. Um, so we can paint with this green color, but we need to paint in streaks. We're at 2%. Okay, that's why we're not seeing it. Let's go to 50 percent there we go okay now we can see it uh, and again we can always bring this down so let's kind of go in here and add some more green if we wanted to let's choose this brownish color and let's add that in there as well Ah, we don't want to mess up the what's your face. So if we want to be a little more dramatic, I know we have that gray, but let's add in a really saturated green as well. Let's go and grab this color as well. Let's add another really saturated version of that. Now, again, you don't need this for every shoot. This doesn't need to be something you add on every 
So you can go edit, it's very specific edits. Again, beauty shots, things that need details, you're probably gonna go this extra on. So that obviously looks absolutely nuts. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our blend modes here. Um, and we're gonna set it to soft light. And then we're gonna reduce it down. Nope, let's do this first. It's actually gauzy and blurry. Say about like 2%, two pixels. Two pixels looks good. And then we can reduce the opacity. You see that it added a little more vibrancy to the eyes. So we could stop there. Um, another thing that we can do too is just add a sharpening layer. Not a sharpen, yeah, we can add a sharpening layer. So there's multiple ways to sharpen. Um, a lot of times I just use the beauty retouch panel sharpening. Click that and I'll sharpen and then mask it in. Or I just made a new layer here. We can use the actual built-in sharpening tool. And again, we're not going to sharpen everything, but we are going to set this to like 10%. Ooh, ha, that is not it. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't look right. We're gonna make sure we hit preserve details. We're gonna sample all layers. And then we're gonna come in here and we're going to sharpen the areas that should be sharp. And for me, that's, I know we're going outside of just the eye itself, but we do have to address the lashes when it comes to sharpening. Because what you want to do is you want this whole area to pop. Speaking of which, now that we're here, might as well dodge and bring a little bit on our lashes. We need to make our lashes pop out a little more. This is the color, so this rub. So because she added a reflective layer to the lashes, that's why I'm using white instead of black. Even though we know most of our lashes are black, this is gonna make those specific ones pop out. Let's put these inside of here as well. Let's cut it off. Cut it on. There we go. If we pull it back, switch over to my mouse. If we pull it back and we just look at each eye, let's cut it off. Cut it on, off. On. Let's raise this up to like 72%. I'm not seeing all my changes off. Oh, beautiful. Let's do this as well so that you guys can really see it because I don't think you can fully see it. Let's mask out those few changes that I did make to the other eye. Okay, so now we can really see the difference. One eye just pops. This eye on the left is just popping out now. Got way more detail. So if this video helped you guys, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I definitely want to continue making these videos. I'm going to continue making these videos. The next one will be on eyes again. I'm going to show you guys some shortcuts that I would use if I have a tight deadline um, and my client, you know, there's no budge. It's just like it's just due on Wednesday and <laughs> it's Tuesday night. So, this <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys some shortcuts on how to like speed up the process quite a bit. So remember guys, eyes are super important, especially in portraits. They're going to help your viewer connect with your subject. You don't want to over overly brighten the eye as far as the whites of the eye. It's called, a, I think, the sclera. You don't want to over brighten that because it's going to look like an alien. And um, you don't want to go down the uncanny valley. 
Uh, remember eyes do have veins so don't remove all of the veins from the eyes but definitely reduce them down and then make sure that you can see the catch lights and make sure there's emphasis on the catch lights it's really going to help the eyes pop all right i will see you guys soon